Chairs No Waiting, episode number 440, Who Stole My House? Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you by the folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Head over there and check out the Mayberry's Andy Griffith Show squad car, 1967 version. You can check that out. It's a little Hot Wheels car thing. Go check it out at weaversdepartmentstore.com. You can also get you a Barney Fife lapel pin, tie tack, whatever you want to call it. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. I want to thank you for your support and thank all of our patrons at patreon.com for your support as well. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting. It is awesome to be here in Mayberry with you. This week, we've got some fun. Who stole my house? That's right. Who, who stole my house? Now... Uh, I, I, let me. I guess I should uh, read the actual email that uh, that caused this, and then we got uh, we're going to go and check this one out. So here's what I got uh, in the mail that uh, triggered this whole thing. This is from Nathan Earls, and he said, "Hey, Alan, I thought you might appreciate this. Do you remember the episode? You know, like I wouldn't remember. No, but do you remember the episode where Andy is talking to Floyd about?" Who blackballed Howard Sprague? You remember that? I do. Uh, at the you know at the lodge meeting, if I remember correctly, Floyd is only half listening because he's reading the newspaper, and it's an article about somebody stealing this poor guy's house while he was at work. Uh, I always thought that that was a funny line, and it, it was kind of far fetched. After hearing this story, I guess it may not be far fetched. By the way, I know who did it, a trailer thief. That's right, folks. Here's here's the actual story. Thieves steal business owners' tiny house in Springfield. Can you believe this? Springfield. And I'm pretty sure it's Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. So, uh, you know, instead of me covering this, I thought uh, it would be fitting if we let somebody else uh, actually read the story to you. So um, I'm going to pass this over to Floyd and see what, what he thinks. Well, let's just see here what's in the paper. <clears throat> you see, yeah, Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> Springfield, yeah. Shoplifting is nothing new, but uh, one local business owner arrived at work today to find out her entire shop was still. Oh, my goodness. Surveilling images, uh, they showed how thieves drove away with it. Lock, stock, and barrel. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the images found so far are too grainy uh, to determine the vehicle type. Uh, needs further investigation. Yeah. Uh, detectives plan to investigate and find more on Monday. Oh, just terrible. Yeah. Even though it's a tiny house, the front porch boutique is still hard to miss. That's why the owners parked it at the Battlefield Mall. Yeah. The boutique store is in Rolla, Montana. Well, that's where it is, Montana. Springfield, Montana. Well, it, it, it travels with its merchandise for different events. Yeah. Yeah, the store owner says, by leaving it here, I thought the number, I thought number one, uh, they'd have told me uh, it was the busiest intersection in Springfield. Yeah. Springfield, Missouri, Montana. Where is this? Missouri. I guess that's Roland, Missouri. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see. It's the busiest intersection in Springfield. So I just thought, you know, it was more advertising. Yeah. Owner Lisa Stubblefield said. But when Stubblefield went the next morning to open up her shop for the busy food truck <laughs> showdown. Well, they're having a food, food truck showdown. And uh, she didn't expect what was next. She said, I showed up at 830 this morning to open the doors and it was gone. She uh, who would have had the nerve to take it? I mean, it's in the middle of, you know, the city. Uh, so uh, there was never any concern with the mall, Stubblefield said. Now she's on the hunt for the thieves who took her tiny house with the merchandise. Which is the merchandise. And I've been going business to business. All the businesses across the street 
uh, or any proximity to this, that's very close. Uh, just to see if they would have any footage of the people taking, uh, taking her business. Took her whole house. Oh, my goodness. Uh, or where it might have been, Stubblefield said. Stubblefield got her hands on some surveillance images taken around 10 p.m. on Friday, July 6, 2017, headed west on Battlefield Road. Oh, they'll get him now. Yeah, yeah. Even though they're grainy, she hopes someone might recognize the vehicle involved and so she can get it back. And she can get back her mobile boutique. Get out there. Uh, 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 I, she says, uh, I just would have never thought that someone would try to hook it up and take it somewhere. Hopefully, it'll be in the same condition that it was before. And it, and really, we just want it returned so we can use it for our upcoming events and help grow our small business. The surveillance image appears to show that the signage on the side of the building was taken down to hide its origin. <laughs> oh, they're smart. That was kind of, uh, if you see the tiny house, please call law enforcement. Yeah. Say, when you're driving by, uh, could you check and make sure my house is still there? <laughs> Thank you, Floyd. Thank you for reading that. And it is Missouri, Springfield, Missouri. Floyd was confused, too, because he didn't know Montana, Missouri. He didn't know. So uh, he looked it up, or we looked it up, and uh, determined it was Springfield, Missouri. Now, uh, this was a... Uh, it's a first for me. I'd never heard of a uh, tiny home getting stolen like that. But here's the here was another fun fact about it. So this home got stolen. So yeah, now Floyd was worried about his house getting stolen and asking Andy to drop by and see if he could uh, just make sure my house is still there. Right. So uh, the name of this was uh, the Tiny Fashion House. Now, this is the website. This is what's cool about it. It's, it's frontporchboutique.com. Front porch. So, the Taylor's front porch. You know, hey, it may even look like Andy Taylor's front porch on the front. This is awesome. <laughs> so, we feel bad that they uh, had their, their tiny fashion house stolen. Uh, but uh, it makes for a great story, doesn't it? No information yet as to whether or not the tiny home has been returned to the owners or not, nor is there any information about whether or not Floyd uh, got his house stolen. We're just glad that Floyd's barbershop is not in a tiny home. So, folks, there you go. The Andy Griffith Show, the reason it seems so real is because things like this happen. There's all these information that we hear on The Andy Griffith Show uh, related to uh, just the events, and we all wonder why, you know, that doesn't make any sense. You know, how could that have happened? And then we find out, you know, like Barney buying his parents a septic tank, you know, that that, uh, <laughs> you know, that that really happened. Uh, Everett Greenbaum bought his uh, in-laws uh, a septic tank for their anniversary. You know, they're hard to buy for. Floyd worried about his house getting stolen, and here we go. This business was stolen. So I want to thank, uh, I want to thank, uh, uh, who was it that sent me? Nathan. Nathan for sending me this story. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the show notes for the story because it's, uh, it's worth checking out. And it was on uh, ky3.com. It's the, uh, I think it's a, uh, a TV station there in that area. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Floyd. For taking by to drop by and visit with us. All right, guys, we have got some uh, voicemails that I want to play for you because there's some good ones. Now, this first one was just somebody that dropped by real quick and referencing, I believe, Opie's Birdhouse, episode number, uh, what was it, 438 of Two Chairs. So let's listen to this. Hey, Alan, George Lindsay. Hope you're doing well. Nice podcast last night. The old, uh, Birdhouse episode, that was fun. And I uh, just going to say, hey, look forward to seeing you all at Mayberry Days. Almost forgot. Goober says, hey, keep up the good work. <laughs> Thanks, bye. Thank you, George. Thank you for calling in. Now, this is George Lindsay Jr., and he's going to be joining us at Mayberry Days this year. we got a, a big uh, bunch of folks that are going to be coming there uh, to the uh, Mayberry Days event. And it's all been 
uh, announced recently. So if you go to MayberryDays.org, you can check all this stuff out. Uh, some of the folks that are going to be there are, of course, George Lindsay. We just got through telling you that. Uh, we're going to have Betty Lynn, Thelma Lou, Rodney Dillard will be there this year. Clint Howard is expected to be there unless, you know, you get some big movie role and can't come. Margaret Carey, she was Bess Muggins and Helen Scobie. Ronnie Shell, he'll be there. He was Jim Martin and Bernie the Furrier. And Karen Knotts, the daughter of Don Knotts. Maggie Peterson, Charlene herself. Uh, Leroy McNeese is returning after a three-year absence. And Bettina Link. Bettina Link is the wife of the late associate producer of the Andy Griffith Show, Richard O. Link. And, of course, I already mentioned George Lindsay Jr., the son of George Lindsay. So, folks, we have got a great lineup of people are going to be at Mayberry Days. I definitely want to encourage you to go there and check it out. All right, so we got another voicemail. Uh, so let's uh, let's head over there and hear this one. Evening, Alan. This is Indiana Steve just dropping on by to let you know how sorely missed you were this past Monday. Uh, we all gathered, or a bunch of us gathered together at the chat room and, and listened to the Friday broadcast again. There was about a dozen of them in the chat room. We were all talking about Mayberry trivia and different things about the Andy Griffith Show and, and how bad we missed you. So we hope that you had a safe trip home and can't wait to see and hear from you next Monday. Thanks. Bye. Uh, thank you, Steve. Now he's talking about episode number 439. I had to record it early because I was going to be out of town and was not going to be able to record it on our Monday nights as we're recording this one live on Monday nights. I normally uh, do the show there and there's a chat room full of folks, which there is right now in the chat room. There are tons of folks in there talking to one another. And for the most part, I don't know how much they're listening to me, but they are saying, out of voice, Steve. Yay. So they're in there. So they're talking to him. Uh, but, folks, uh, if I invite you to come. There's 21 people in the chat room right now visiting with one another. Uh, a lot of Mayberry fun going on in and around the chat room and the live recording. If you can make it, it's on Monday nights starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Okay. So if you go to live dot two chairs, no waiting dot com so it's live dot two chairs no waiting dot com it'll take you right into the live area if you just go to two chairs no waiting dot com and click the live button it'll take you right to it so you're definitely invited now this is another this is a special report special report from uh mayberry correspondent tim bradshaw he wrote in or he wrote me he called me he did everything he could to make sure i knew uh, what was going on. So, folks, let's go and hear this from Randy, because, I mean, not Randy, Tim, because this is awesome. Uh, Alan, at the meetup, I was sharing with a few others about some experiences of Mayberry moments while wearing the Andrew Griffith Show t-shirts. I've posted a couple of them online, but this was big, so I wanted to share it with two chairs, no waiting, if you'd like to run it. Recently, while at the go-kart track in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, with one of my grandsons, I was wearing one of my favorite Tags t-shirts. It was one of the light gray ones with the badge on the pocket and Mayberry Sheriff's Department printed across the back. While watching my grandson ride the go-kart, a couple approached me with a big smile on their faces. The wife looked at me and said, I would like for you to take a picture of my husband. At first, I was thinking, hmm, this is different. And after a small gap in the conversation, she said, his name is Andy Taylor, and he is a police officer. I responded with a smile, and he happily showed me his badge with a great big smile on his face. We talked a little bit. His wife said he needed to get one of the shirts like I was wearing. I asked him if they were Mayberry uh, fans, did they watch the Andy Griffith show, and they replied they did enjoy the show. I asked them if they had ever heard of Mayberry Days in Mount Airy, and they said they had not. At this time, I was proud to give them a card given to me by Goober Powell at the meetup and showed them the links to all the great websites. Also told them about the podcast. They became very interested and were so surprised that so much was going on about tags. A very friendly couple from Ohio, they would fit right into Mayberry with the rest of us. 
Just before we parted ways, I asked him if I could take his photograph with his badge, and he eagerly showed his badge with a big smile for the photo. I told him, I said, if you just show up in September and let somebody know that you're Andy Taylor and that you're a, a police officer, I said, you just might get some special attention. Anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, made my day. I think it made his day, too. He was pretty excited about it. He saw my T-shirt that said Mayberry Sheriff's Department, and his wife said he needed to get one. And I said, I think so. That would be pretty good. Just want to share that with you. I'm going to send you a photo of him if you'd like to put it on. Uh, I'll send it to you uh, by email. And we'll talk to you later. Enjoy the show and keep up the good work. Wow. Thank you so much, Tim. That is awesome. Andy Taylor is the actual sheriff. Is that not is that not cool? Uh, anyway, so yes, Tim did send me a picture, and I will be posting them online because wow, is that not cool? They only got one picture of him. Hopefully, he'll show up at Mayberry Days because that would be absolutely amazing if he showed up. Uh, so he met him in T- Pigeon Forge. And he mentioned that Goober Fife had given him, he, I think he said Goober Pyle, but Goober Pyle, Fife is who he's talking about, had given him these little cards. Now, uh, Goober had made little uh, business cards that uh, have all the information about uh, keeping the Mayberry spirit alive. He has the front, has pictures of the Andy Griffith show on it, and the back has all kinds of information about websites uh, that you, uh, you can give to people. So he made these. Because I talked about on a podcast episode about sharing the Mayberry spirit. Tim, great job sharing the Mayberry spirit. And great job to Goober Fife as well for providing the card you were able to give to Andy Taylor. (laughs) Andy Taylor. Awesome. So hopefully he will make it to Mayberry Days uh, this year. Uh, Again, Mayberry Days. The last full weekend of September. Uh of every year so make plans to be there every year this year it starts actually on that monday they're starting to have stuff all the that week so the week of september the 18th through sunday the 24th uh, there's stuff going on in and around the town of mount airy uh, head over to mayberrydays.org and check it out so man tim thank you so much for that now uh, not to be und- outdone, we still have our report from Mayberry History. Mayberry History, that's right. So, folks, I know you're going to enjoy this. I always enjoy these reports, and I thank Randy Turner for doing this. So let's go over and check them out. Welcome to This Week in Mayberry History, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Bill Idelson was born on August the 21st, 1919. Fans of The Andy Griffith Show know him as one of the writers behind a number of episodes considered to be classics. But he was successful on a number of fronts in a multifaceted career that spanned from 1931 to 2007. As a child actor, Bill is best remembered for playing Rush Gook on the extremely popular radio series Vic and Sade. Only 12 when he started, he played the adopted son of the title characters in a series that once had 7 million devoted listeners. The series ran for 14 years, with Bill playing the role other than when in the military. When Vic and Sade ended, Bill moved to Los Angeles and began appearing primarily in television. He left the entertainment industry for a brief time to work in real estate, but returned to not only act, but to write for the medium. The first televised episode he wrote was a 1961 episode of The Twilight Zone. For years, Bill continued these two successful dual careers, staying busy as a character actor and continuing to write. A series in which he both wrote and acted provided him the television role for which he is best known. Bill was cast in The Dick Van Dyke Show as the recurring Mama's Boy character Herman Glimpshire, Sally Rogers' sometimes boyfriend, who would do little without his mother's approval. 
Bill played the recurring role and also wrote several episodes of the series. In 1964, Bill began a writing partnership with Sam Bobrick, which lasted several years. The team began writing for The Andy Griffith Show during its fourth season. Over that season and the next three, the writing team wrote 19 episodes, many of which are classics, and one, The Shoplifters, earning them a Writers Guild of America award. Bill and Sam remained writing partners through 1967. They also wrote 15 episodes of Gomer Pyle USMC, while Bill continued his acting career, even appearing in one of the 1965 episodes of USMC. At the end of 1967, Bill and Sam dissolved their writing partnership. Bill then partnered with writer Harvey Miller. The pair wrote an additional eight episodes of USMC, meaning Bill wrote 23 episodes of the series, which is more than 15% of the total episodes produced. Bill and Harvey also helped create Love American Style, earning them an Emmy nomination in 1971 for the series. In addition to producing the show, Bill also wrote seven segments and often served as a script consultant. In late 1972, Bill began writing various series episodes on his own, with only the occasional co-writing job with Harvey, until his second writing partnership also dissolved. His next to last acting role was a reprisal of his most well-known in television. He again played Herman Glimpshire, now married to the former Sally Rogers, in the TV reunion movie, The Dick Van Dyke Show Revisited. After such a career, one would be entitled to rest on one's laurels. However, while Idelson had retired from television writing in 1987, he wrote several books about his career, as well as a textbook used in a popular class he taught in script writing. Bill passed away in 2007, but in addition to his many other accomplishments, he is also well remembered in the industry for his role as a writing mentor to many writers in Hollywood. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening, and remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Ah, yet another amazingly good report from Randy. Uh, folks, if you don't want to miss a uh, weekly, uh, daily version of this, which is the uh, Today in Mayberry History, you can send an email to Randy at turnersgrade at gmail.com, and he'll make sure you get an email to remind you about the daily report that you can pick up over at the Gomer and Goober Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild. Woo, I said it right. <laughs> Friends, it is always a pleasure to be here in Mayberry with you. I hope you enjoyed the stories. I hope you enjoyed Floyd's report about who stole his house. And uh, all the, uh, and uh, there was just so much on this. Tim's report, the, the voicemail from George Lindsay Jr. Wow, what a great, great, uh, fun time we have here in Mayberry. Friends, I would love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. Let me know what you're thinking. Tell me what you think about all these uh, different reports. You can also email me at floyd at imabry.com or you can just head over to twochairsnowaiting.com and click the contact link at the top of the page and it will get you right there. It's right there on the left side of the page. Contact. All kinds of information about how to contact me. Head over there and check it out. Folks, I love hearing from you. I enjoy spending time here in Mayberry with you. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. And until next time, I'll be waiting right here in Mayberry. We'll see you here then. Good night, everybody.